Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John here with my trusty sidekick, Jeremy. I sound like a horse when you say that. Anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about some brand new things from Eastman Guitars. It is actually going to be a whole showdown on the new Tone Tight Neck System. What is that? I don't know. We're going to find out all about it right after this. Well, now we're back and we're going to talk about all the cool things that come out of you Eastman. You guys are going to get some early insights and the reason you did that is because you liked and subscribed down That's below. Right. You did, didn't you? Okay, you make sure have. you do that if you haven't already done it because we have some <laughs> early information about a lot of these manufacturers. We Breaking make inroads. news, if you will. We say, you tell us the secrets, we'll buy another guitar. And so they tell us <laughs> secrets and we buy more guitars and it works out good for both of us, I think. So make sure you subscribe down below, share this with your friends and family and colleagues and also make sure that you comment in the comment section. Uh, I wouldn't do it any other place because they don't go anywhere if you do that. So use the comment section for all comments and we will read them. That's, that's a good place to put them, is in there. Also, uh, as always, there is a complete uh, they're going to want to watch song, that video, yes. Yeah, um, this was some sort of a, a performance that uh, we just did. <clears throat> uh, we brought back the 90s, guys. We, we did, or I guess that was early 2000s, 90s, 2000s, somewhere in there. Anyway, uh, stuff that I grew up on, a little green day for y'all, and that entire performance is available here on YouTube, and there's a link to it right down below here, so you can check that out, as well as links to the various segments of this, including at the end we'll have tone demos, and we're going to be doing a shootout all about this new uh, neck joint. We're going to talk about it, and then we're going to do some tone variant stuff. And for our next, check for our next song, can we do some Atlantis Morissette? We can do some Atlantis. I think you I ought to know, know would be that would actually be a lot of fun. I, see you, now. you, you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like that Jeremy sings in a totally different key that he just played it. Well, on my mandolin, it would have been the, the melodies, right note. Not only when that. I find a string on this guitar, it's not what I expect. <laughs> no. You, 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 I don't know. <laughs> it's like a Which total I think mis is the proper mismatch melody. of a lot of things right there. Anyway, um, so here's what we're doing. We're going to talk about some new things that came out of here. As the newly anointed, in case you missed uh, one of our other videos, we were told recently we are now the largest acoustic Eastman dealer in the world, and as such, Quite an honor. we keep getting these kind of cool little things that kind of get us a little bit ahead of some and of the others. And also because of this video content, I, being serious, you guys watching this channel, um, the manufacturers notice that as well. They see, they see the content, we've got a great team here that does all the video production, and so they say, hey, we've got people wanting these, but we know you guys will make a cool video on it, we're going to send it to you first. Ooh. So this tone tight. Uh, neck joint system is something that Dana Bourgeois developed and, and <laughs> patented, I believe. That's right. And I don't know if it's patented, but I will tell you this much. There is some really cool, well, let's backtrack just a hair. Uh, last year, at the beginning of the year, there was this really huge hubbub that happened. And it was hullabaloo, a hubba, hubbubaloo. Hullabaloo. 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 All right, there you go. Um, there was an email that was sent out to all the dealers and as well as a press release sent out to all the acoustic uh, groups and forums, which said basically from Dana himself that there was going to be a new collaboration between Bourgeois Guitars and Eastman uh, Fretted Instruments, which is really, really cool. And all of us stood around going, what does that mean? Nobody knew. Those who are huge bourgeois fans, they're like, well, what does that mean? Did bourgeois buy Eastman? Or did Eastman buy bourgeois? Are they coming together? Anyway, the official statement st said that what Dana wanted to be able to do was, with his guitars, nothing was available if you were to order a guitar for under five to $6,000 and go way beyond that. And with Eastman, Eastman has been known to be a sub $3,000 brand uh, all the way to the top of the line and going down below. And a lot of the reason behind that is one, they can afford to do that. The building costs as well as overall market share has allowed Eastman to be more affordable and the production costs for Bourgeois has forced it to be higher as well as the values that they that they bring to the, the table. But Dana has always, there has been joint ventures in the past where he wanted to try to bring some of his guitars, his innovations into a lesser priced marketplace. And that's kind of what has kind of come out of this. There's going to be a lot more coming out, but one of the first things that has come out is this brand new neck system that is brought to the Eastman world. And we actually got in a few 
extra samples that are not necessarily going to be the way they'll be in the future, as well as some that are going to be the way in the future. Including these two right here. These are going to be the new standard for... Yours is. This one, okay. well, this one is, yours is not. Correct. There we go. So <laughs> that's how we're going to talk about this. And that's why it's very convenient to have this little port here because I can see, it nope, is. this is the traditional dovetail joint in this guitar. In your B-roll, you'll be able to see all this stuff. So in your Eastman dealership, over the next year, you're going to start seeing this tag right here. This tag has Eastman on the back side, and then on this side, it says the Tone Tight System. On this tone tight system, this is the neck joint that is used on all bourgeois guitars. Um, basically, it is a new bolt-on one, and I'm going to read it to you real quick so you know what it says. It says, this model features the tone tight neck system designed by Luthier Dana Bourgeois. Efficient neck, or these are kind of the features, the efficient neck to body tonal transfer, a dual action truss rod and adjustability, and we'll get to that in just one second, as well as easy setup and maintenance. Those are the main advantages of this new system. Now, you all who are big guitar uh, fans and lovers know that this has been a point of contention for luthiers as well as buyers uh, for quite a long time. The bolt-on neck system is not new, Jeremy. It's, it's debatable. There's, there's different camps and people seem to get in one camp and kind of stay in that camp on which they prefer. Um, the traditional is the dovetail joint. It's been as early as violin making way back mandolins. It, instruments way back in the teens, before that even, like the... I have no idea. The four or five I'm, I'm going to follow you Way on back this. Way classical like... music instruments, they all had the dovetail joint because it's a very secure joint. You have a lot of tension on these necks. That joint really connects the two, uh, the body to the neck uh, very securely and well. But it takes a lot of time and craftsmanship to make sure those joints are all very tight and fitted. One of the downsides is if you need a neck uh, reset, which every guitar eventually will need, it is quite the ordeal. They have to remove some frets, steam the neck, apply that out of there, kind of reform the, the dovetail so that the neck angle is now at a different angle. Mm -hmm. So a lot of work to do that. And then more modern style would, would they With a bolt-on. Uh, so let's talk about that. There, What is a bolt-on neck? Well, some people will call it mortise and tenon. Some will call it a bolt-on. There's different types of bolt-on. You will see like the pocket style, like electric guitars, where they have this little pocket and two screws that kind of come up from the top. That is not what we're talking about here. This is more the mortise and tenon style neck joint where you have a pocket built into the neck block, as well as the neck has an extension that goes in there with two bolts that kind of come in there. Now, Dana's done a few extra things on this. I want to go through real fast the pluses and minuses. Um, and here's the deal. If you were to press me, I'm going to say I am more so a dovetail joint fan. Am I so, so much in camp there that I wouldn't take another one? Absolutely not, because I have played some great guitars that were a bolt-on style neck, and they just absolutely floored me, were some of the greatest ones in the whole world. You know who sells a lot of guitars? Who? Taylor. Taylor does? Taylor they are one Bolton. of the most... They, are, they have made this be a prominent part of their marketing. Taylor's been doing this for a long time. But other brands that some of you may or may not know that do this on a regular basis, Callings, uh, Huss and Dalton. Uh, we were just talking, McPherson does one. Um, I was just talking about Atkin that has one, uh, Boucher. I can name lots of great luthiers that have been doing this as well as a lot that don't. Martin Guitars still do dovetail joints. Eastman is still going to continue to do dovetail joints. Um, most of your traditional build reissues, Thompson Guitars, are going to be dovetail joints. These are kind of the common things, you know, so I found great guitars from every one of those builders. I would not dismiss any of them for the pluses or the minuses of either one. But again, I find that the dovetail joint, in my mind, makes a little bit better marriage of the two pieces of wood. If you it, see it may a be fine, psychological to you. You may just may be, be a traditional guy, no fuddy duddy. It could be. Very well. And you're un unwilling to change. If you see a really well done dovetail joint, that is what is in there. And I, I think this is part of the argument too for this is, you know, they have talked for years about how you can get a better neck joint by squeezing the two bolt-ons together. And I, I understand that. It makes perfect sense. You can tighten it as tight as possible. If you see a poorly done dovetail joint, which has been done for many years, and it is mostly fit together and they fill the rest of it with wood filler or glue, I agree, not such a great way to do it. That said, well done dovetail joints are a kind of a masterpiece. You need a little wood melon to even get down in there. It's that tight. They just yeah. like 
Good Any woodworker kind of knows that. Um, but you were talking about advantages, pluses, and minuses yep. of them. Let's start with the dovetail joint. Okay. Dovetail joint, to me, a little bit better marriage of the two pieces of wood, the neck block to the actual neck. Feels like it is a much tighter bond if it's done correctly. I think tonally, again, my opinion, I find that to be a little bit, little bit. We're talking nuanced here. Uh, superior for my for my ear. Um, now, the difference for a bolt on disadvantage why, or disadvantage disadvantage, of disadvantage doing a neck reset or any major work on there. It is a hassle. It is a lot of work. We have. I actually was in with our luthier doing a neck reset not too long ago. It is a lot of work. You have to slowly steam the glue to get loose, get warm enough to get loose, slowly work it out of there. And you can, if you're not careful and not uh, expert at this, it is easy to do damage to the guitar while doing so. Yeah, I would think another disadvantage probably, and maybe why a lot of the newer builders are going to the mortise and tenon or bolt-on, is labor intensive. Uh, you have to be very accurate every time you do both the pocket, which would be in the body of the guitar, and then the dovetail of the neck itself to make sure consistently every guitar you're putting out has the form and fit to that, mm -hmm. where it's probably easier to do a more consistent shape when you have the same oval shape and then you do the bolt-on. And and I guess we'll get into the plus and minus of the, the bolt-on, but I would say on the dovetail, that's probably a disadvantage. It takes more uh, skilled labor, I think, to get that dovetail joint to be consistent every time. I would probably time. say so. Again, now, uh, now that we're moving on to the <clears throat> bolt-on style, um, again, using a CNC machine, especially like what Taylor does, those, they can get a precise uh, pocket as well as a precise uh, tenon, I guess. Yeah, anyway, the extension of the neck uh, to fit fairly well and pretty accurately. Um, it, it does not, you know, pull apart, pull with two pieces of wood together, but it is definitely going to fit inside that pocket very, very well. consistent, probably. The advantage, again, here, biggest one, repairs. When you do a neck reset on one of these, and if you look at this particular one, you will see it is just a series of bolts that is just loosened, pulled apart, change your neck angle, and go. Taylor's made this abundantly clear how easy they do it. They've actually got That's a series of shims that will do this and, and go. Um, it, you know, again, very, very cool. I, again, I will argue that there's shims inside of your neck block, so is that advantage. as well as a dovetail? So probably after a neck set reset, it may lose one of the advantages that I know part of Dana's uh, claim to fame with this is luthiers are looking for a way to get transfer the resonance to like the bridge of the guitar and to the top of the guitar from there. And they've done some, I guess, spectrum analysts analyzing, analyzing of that. And this neck joint system, the, the one you have, seems to transfer a little bit more of that sustain and uh, resonance to the top and to the bridge. We have seen that in uh, talks with McPherson. McPherson, McPherson is really thing. big on this transferring of energy through the body of the guitar. Uh, if you've never played a McPherson guitar, you will know probably the most sustained guitars out there have tons and tons of sustain. They even use, very I think, a, -like. a pretty large brass uh, They put washer, a pin. Basically. It's actually a, a full-on pin inside the neck block that is bolted in through, uh, giving you extra weight and, again, energy transfer. They go all the way from headstock all the way through. So, again, there is an advantage there. Is it to what you as a player like to hear? I don't know. And do you maybe. lose some of that when you put that shim in there for a neck reset? It probably yeah, loses maybe. some of that advantage probably. then. I, I would I assume so. Again, by the way, these are a lot of opinions right now. And I don't know. What do you You know think? what they say about opinions, don't you? That mine are the best. That's what they say. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is definitely a lot easier to take apart. You literally take the bolts out of there, pull it apart, reset it. Again, energy transfer is one of the things that they want to do. Um, the, you know, one of the things that makes this particular, well, we've, I think we're kind of covered most of the pluses and minuses of the two. One of the things that makes this particular neck system work well uh, and something that makes it a little bit different that they talk about in here is the dual action truss rod. Here's what's weird. Eastman has been using a dual action truss rod in this guitar for- In the dovetail version. In the dovetail version forever. But one of the big competitors for this is the Taylor guitars who are also doing a bolt-on. Their bolt-on does not allow that to extension to come inside here to do a dual action truss rod. Um, so you have the single action truss rod, which is the cover up top on this. The way this system on works, yeah, on the Taylor, the uh, way this system works, it allows for a dual action truss rod. 
What that means for you that don't know, uh, as of right now, I keep doing this, putting my fingers inside this uh, hole right here. It's kind I put of my soda in there. <laughs> anyway, it's a comfortable place to hold on. Um, is that a dual action truss rod, instead of just being able to tighten it to take away some of that extra uh, bowing of the neck, you tighten the truss rod, it will pull that back. But here's the problem, when you get to a zero spot, which is where the nut is no longer holding tension against that, and you're wanting to go backwards because it's got uh, it's been actually back bowed, and we want to let it relieve itself back forward a little bit more. And we're at a zero spot where the nut no longer has any contact with the with the neck. That's it. There's nothing else to go with. With a dual action truss rod, it will actually start to push that backwards. So there's two rods pushing against each other as well as pulling. So you now have a dual action truss rod, which does make this in these particular series, probably a major advantage over their competition uh, for this kind of body style. And if you're looking at a grand auditorium, we all know this, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. You're probably looking at Taylor's as well as uh, a couple others, but mainly Taylor guitars. They're really known for this body shape, for this style, so. Correct. That's kind of the new tone tight uh, in the nutshell. And then that's gonna be, <laughs> in what series of guitars are they gonna be releasing that? So as of right now in the specs that I have been told through Eastman, this is something that is going to be in the new AC 522, 622, 722, and eventually as we get more in, the 922 as well. Um, this is their upper end of that. Now, will they eventually go to the 422s and, and uh, yeah, 322s? I'm not certain. I would assume that they are. It is. It should be fairly easy for them to put this into that markings, but again, those two models are so popular and have been run. So now this for is going to so be long. a standard in the the AC from 422 up. From 522. Um, but up, in the yes. uh, in the traditional, like the D the E series, they're going to stick gonna with a dovetail joint. Traditional. That is right. Now we got some stuff back here, and we'll talk about this too. They did some testing on it in the traditional. We got the new 40s in, and I actually have two matching guitars, one with, that's what we did here. We got a matching guitar, one with a dovetail joint, one with a new tone tight. I actually got in at the same time uh, a couple of things which are not gonna be normal, which is one with a dovetail joint on the E40 Thermocure D, as well as one with a tone tight. That will not be seen. We may see a few of them come into it because we're experimenting with it, trying it out, and they will come in. A few of them will come in, but the actual spec for 2022 will be a uh, dovetail joint for that guitar. And for all the E-Series? E-Series guitars, correct. Absolutely. So that's kind of a little bit of that. Everybody's been wondering what has been gonna, what was gonna happen with this collaboration with Bourgeois Guitars. This is kind of one of the first things to hit the States. There will be more. There is actually going to be a series of Bourgeois Guitars that are branded Bourgeois that will have some tie-ins with Eastman. Um, there's gonna be some other cool innovations that uh, Dan has been involved with. Actually, there's been some already. Some of you got to see the uh, Alpine Spruce Tops that were thermocured. That was actually a suggestion by way of Dana to try out. And again, Eastman, being the company that they are, were like, sure, let's check it out. And they did. Same so, with the finish, right? Yeah, that's, true, that's uh, right. We now tone. have True Tone finish, and I guarantee you that was a tie-in with Bourgeois to talk about you know, new finish uh, ideas and designs. So cool stuff is happening Exciting in the times. guitar world. Exciting times. I love it when, uh, again, when we get two different, this is kind of a rare thing, when we get two manufacturers that all have their own cool things that they've been doing. Things they're known for. Yes, and now they're able to kind of go, you know what, let's listen to this guy. Let's take a little bit of that. this, take a little of that. And they're sharing ideas. I think it's a really cool way to continue to see growth in the guitar industries. Um, so very, very glad to see this. And uh, now let's get into the comparisons. Yeah, we want to know, can you tell a difference between a tone tight neck and a dovetail? We're going to do another blind shootout, aren't we? I think so. Both of these AC, what is this, the five? This is an AC 722 CE. <clears throat> Again, one with a dovetail with the Dakota fade. This one is one with the new tone tight system. And then we're gonna do the same with these uh, E40Ds. Correct.
Well, there you have it, Jeremy. That is the Tone Tight uh, samples. That is the uh, Pit and the guitars back to back. Two different kinds of guitars with the same uh, Speaking neck Speaking of neck joints. joints. I don't know. You'll see a chiropractor. You should probably do that. Uh, but what did you think? What was your, your final assessment? I actually see, this is the part where I get to pat myself on the back. It actually, exactly. Here's the part where I get to <laughs> roll your eyes. My own <laughs> my suspicions. Own suspicions. My own <laughs> this opinions. is where you roll your eyes. Um, it, it sort of did. Uh, I, there's no doubt to me that both systems are great. There, there is no major disadvantage to either one. It's a preference situation. That's the reason why so many manufacturers are using both of these different techniques. They're both working out well. And again, if that's the sound you're looking for and the you know advantages that you want out of your guitar, there's no, there's no lose here. There's no here. wrong answer. There is no lose here. That said, tone-wise, I think that any of the ones that have the tone tight system are going to give you a more sustain, a little bit more brightness, um, and balance in that in that run. The dovetails in both of these two instances seem to be a warmer, a little bit richer, thicker tone out of it. But again, we're losing that uh, ability to do the uh, or repairs adjustments. and adjustments as easily. I think I kind of agree. I, I think this one had a tone that I prefer a little bit in a guitar, but both of us are coming from a bluegrass background where it's dreadnought, 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 Martin, <laughs> vintage. We hear that, like that's ingrained in our ear. I think Eastman made the right choice by moving towards this new neck joint system on this series of guitar. Which 100%. The, the people that grew up on this probably aren't used to the dreadnought tone. They're used to more of the strummy, high sustain, a little bit more mid-range uh, tone to it, which, that actually enhances a little bit in this. So it was probably a really good move on their part to say let's Perfect. keep it the Dreadnoughts in the traditional E-Series dovetail because that helps provide that tone. And then the more sustained, getting that that uh, resonance in the guitar, maybe not the same tone we're used to in the bluegrass world, but in a more strummy uh, finger style world, it's maybe even a little more preferable. It was a good choice on their part. I, I agree with that 100%. I think modern guitars, we do use modern neck joint. I think uh, there's no doubt here. Let's not beat around the bush. This guitar and this style of guitar is built to compete in a Taylor world. That's what it is built to do. The 40 series behind us is built to compete in a Martin world. We want, you know, as a, that, we want to see more of those tone properties there. Now, again, both of these guitars, this does not sound exactly like a Taylor. It is an Eastman guitar. That does not sound exactly like a Martin guitar, either neck joint. It is going to sound like an Eastman uh, traditional one. So again, I think a smart move is modern sounding guitars. We lean more on that modern neck joint. It's definitely got more of that character. The traditional guitars that are leaned on more of the traditional builds, like a Martin style build, dovetail makes more sense. That said, you may be the player that loves the traditional build done in that, and there's going to be a few of those that are going to show up in here. Uh, it is not the spec. Bourgeois guitars, if you want. That, Absolutely. That's his, his neck joint in his dreadnought. So mm -hmm. that would be an interesting experiment. Dana, build us a dovetail joint so we can do a side-by-side -side and see what the dovetail sounds like on one of your bourgeois guitars versus the uh, the definitely be something tone tight out. system. Absolutely. So it's been requested here, Dana. I'm sure you'll get right on <laughs> yeah, that. It's going to be like, yeah, sure. I'll build you a $6,000 guitar just to test out. Why not? Sure. Sounds like a great idea. Anyway, uh, cool guitars. Either way, again, you're not going to miss out. There will be some of these that are going to show up, again, that are going to be dovetails like this in just this. just came in. And there will be that one. some of these that are going to show up in uh, tone tights uh, for official, a while. The official new spec is going to be tone type I on think all these. my prediction is somewhere around late spring early summer we will be seeing almost all tone tights in here uh, as they they kind of move forward except for again all going to probably be seeing all dovetail joints in the traditional series either way hope you all enjoyed it it was a whole bunch of fun to experiment fun with thing. this I think uh, again this is not a this one's better this one's worse this is just a preference situation so hope you enjoyed the video hope you come back to see the next one and let and, us know which uh, one you liked in the comments right. tell Please us do. we could be wrong you're right the customer's always right so which one is the best system Jeremy always tells me I'm wrong I'm always wrong well people know you would appreciate that hurts my feelings mm -hmm.
And we really appreciate you guys watching that video. It was my favorite one we've made so far. We've, we've done hundreds of videos, and that was the best one. It was. And the next one's going to be even better. If you'd like to see that, <laughs> be sure you subscribe to this channel. And also, the more you comment and inter interact below, the more the YouTube algorithms pick it up and start pushing it out to other people, like-minded people. Algorithms? Algorithms. They're everywhere. They permeate the internet, and YouTube's got one. And it watches our videos, and it sees how much you comment, and then it pushes us to other people like you. And we want everyone to experience the, the acoustic shop world where we talk about instruments, we do reviews, we got some fun videos coming up. We thank you guys so much for being a part of it and we'll see you in the next video.